Artemis, the beautiful nymph Callisto, Eros and other nymphs. Antique fresco from Pompeii. In Greek mythology, Callisto or Callisto was a nymph, or the daughter of King Lycaon, the myth varies in such details. She was one of the followers of Artemis who attracted Zeus. According to some writers, Zeus transformed himself into the figure of Artemis to lure Callisto and seduce her. She became pregnant and when this was eventually discovered, she was expelled from Artemis's group, after which a furious Hera, the wife of Zeus, transformed her into a bear. Later, just as she was about to be killed by her son when he was hunting, she was set among the stars as Ursa Major. She was the bear mother of the Arcadians, through her son Arcus by Zeus. The fourth Galilean moon of Jupiter and a main belt asteroid are named after Callisto. Titian's Diana and Callisto portrays the moment when Callisto's pregnancy is discovered. As a follower of Artemis, Callisto, who Hesiod said was the daughter of Lycaon, king of Arcadia, took a vow to remain a virgin, as did all the nymphs of Artemis. According to Hesiod, she was seduced by Zeus, and of the consequences that followed, Callisto chose to occupy herself with wild beasts in the mountains together with Artemis. And, when she was seduced by Zeus, continued some time undetected by the goddess, but afterwards, when she was already with child, was seen by her bathing and so discovered. Upon this, the goddess was enraged and changed her into a beast. Thus she became a bear and gave birth to a son called Arcos. According to the mythographer Apollodorus, Zeus disguised himself as Artemis or Apollo, in order to lure Callisto into his embrace. According to Ovid, it was Jupiter who took the form of Diana so that he might evade his wife Juno's detection, forcing himself upon Callisto while she was separated from Diana and the other nymphs. Callisto's subsequent pregnancy was discovered several months later while she was bathing with Diana and her fellow nymphs. Diana became enraged when she saw that Callisto was pregnant and expelled her from the group. Callisto later gave birth to Arcus. Juno then took the opportunity to avenge her wounded pride and transformed the nymph into a bear. Sixteen years later Callisto, still a bear, encountered her son Arcus hunting in the forest. Just as Arcus was about to kill his own mother with his javelin, Jupiter averted the tragedy by placing mother and son amongst the stars as Ursa Major and Minor, respectively. Juno, enraged that her attempt at revenge had been frustrated, appealed to Tethys that the two might never meet her waters, thus providing a poetic explanation for their circumpolar positions in ancient times. Diana and Callisto, Antony Blocklant van Montfort, c. 1580 Either Artemis slew Callisto with a shot of her silver bow, perhaps urged by the wrath of Juno or later Arcus, the eponym of Arcadia, nearly killed his bare mother, when she had wandered into the forbidden precinct of Zeus. In every case, Zeus placed them both in the sky as the constellations Ursa Major, called Arctus, the bear, by Greeks, and Ursa Minor. Jupiter and Callisto by Carl Phillips Spearings. In the background Jupiter's jealous wife Juno is dragging Callisto by the hair. The name Callist, most beautiful, may be recognized as an epithet of the goddess herself, though none of the inscriptions at Athens that record priests of Artemis Callist. Date before the 3rd century BCE. Artemis Callist was worshipped in Athens in a shrine which lay outside the Dipylon Gate, by the side of the road to the academy. W. S. Ferguson suggested that Artemis Satera and Artemis Callist were joined in a common cult administered by a single priest. The bear-like character of Artemis herself was a feature of the Brauronia. The myth in Catasterismi may be derived from the fact that a set of constellations appear close together in the sky, in and near the zodiac sign of Libra, namely Ursa Minor, Ursa Major, Boötes, and Virgo. The constellation Boötes was explicitly identified in the Hesiodic Astronomia as Arcus, the bear warden, he is Arcos the son of Callisto and Zeus, and he lived in the country about Lycaon. After Zeus had seduced Callisto, Lycaon, pretending not to know of the matter, entertained Zeus, as Hesiod says, and set before him on the table the babe, Arcos, which he had cut up. The stars of Ursa Major were all circumpolar in Athens of 400 BCE, and all but the stars in the great bear's left foot were circumpolar in Ovid's Rome, in the first century. C. Now, however, due to the procession of the equinoxes, the feet of the great bear constellation do sink below the horizon from Rome and especially from Athens, however. Ursa Minor does remain completely above the horizon, even from latitudes as far south as Honolulu and Hong Kong. According to Julian Dehoy, who used phylogenetic and statistical tools, the story could be a recent transformation of a Paleolithic myth. Sebastiano Ricci, Diana, and Callisto 
1712-1716 Apulian red figurchus with Callisto turning into a bear, about 360 BCE, terracotta, attributed to near the Black Fury group. Active early 300s BCE, J. Paul Getty Museum Callisto's story was sometimes depicted in classical art, where the moment of transformation into a bear was the most popular. From the Renaissance on a series of major history paintings as well as many smaller cabinet paintings and book illustrations, usually called Diana and Callisto, depicted the traumatic moment of discovery of the pregnancy, as the goddess and her nymphs bathed in a pool, following Ovid's account. The subject's attraction was undoubtedly mainly the opportunity it offered for a group of several females to be shown largely nude. In Jupiter and Callisto by Francois Boucher, Zeus slash Jupiter takes the form of Artemis slash Diana Titian's Diana and Callisto. Was the greatest of these, quickly disseminated by a print by Cornelius Court. Here, as in most subsequent depictions, Diana points angrily, as Callisto is held by two nymphs, who may be pulling off what little clothing remains on her. Other versions include one by Rubens, and Diana bathing with her nymphs with Actaeon and Callisto by Rembrandt, which unusually combines the moment with the arrival of Actaeon. The basic composition is rather unusually consistent. Carlo Ridolfi said there was a version by Giorgione, who died in 1510, though his many attributions to Giorgione of paintings that are now lost are treated with suspicion by scholars. Other, less dramatic, treatments before Titian established his composition are by Palma Vecchio and Dosso Dosi. Anibale Caracci's The Loves of the Gods includes an image of Juno urging Diana to shoot Callisto in ursine form. Jupiter and Callisto, Peter Paul Rubens, 1613 Diana and Callisto commissioned from the artist by Philip IV of Spain for his new hunting lodge, the Torre de la Parada. Although Ovid places the discovery in the ninth month of Callisto's pregnancy, in paintings she is generally shown with a rather modest bump for late pregnancy. With the visitation in religious art, this was the leading recurring subject in history painting that required showing pregnancy in art, which early modern painters still approached with some caution. In any case, the narrative required that the rest of the group had not previously noticed the pregnancy. Callisto being seduced by Zeus slash Jupiter in disguise was also a popular subject, usually called Jupiter and Callisto. It was the clearest common subject with lesbian lovers from classical mythology. The two lovers are usually shown happily embracing in a bower. The violent rape described by Ovid is following Callisto's realization of what is going on is rarely shown. In versions before about 1700 Callisto may show some doubt about what is going on, as in the versions by Rubens. It was especially popular in the 18th century, when depictions were increasingly erotic, François Boucher painted several versions. During the Nazi occupation of France, resistance poet Robert Desnoe wrote a collection of poems entitled Calixto Suivi de Country, where he used the myth of Callisto as a symbol for beauty imprisoned beneath ugliness, a metaphor for France under the German occupation. Aeschylus tragedy Callisto is lost. Thanks for watching.